All right guys, so today I am going to be installing this oil pressure gauge on the hatch. Uh, this is a glow shift. I really do like these gauges for the price. Uh, they are pretty good quality, so they're not too expensive. This one right here, I believe, is 59 bucks, so 60 bucks shipped to your house. And honestly, these gauges look really nice. They come illuminated in seven different colors, so you can change the color to pretty much anything you want. And I don't know, all around these, these gauges work well, so I really like them, and we are going to be installing this one today. And unlike Charlie's oil pressure gauge, uh, this one is digital, which I like much better because you don't actually have to run an oil line into the car like on a mechanical oil pressure gauge. So here's what comes in the box. We just got some mounting hardware over here. We got a little wiring harness for the gauge, got some instructions, the oil sensor, and the gauge itself. So like I was talking about, apart from a mechanical oil pressure gauge, um, this one right here actually just uses the sensor and then this will screw into the block or oil fitting wherever it needs to go and then two wires off of this will run to the gauge and then that will tell you the oil pressure as and whereas a mechanical one you'd actually have a physical like oil line running into the car and oil would actually be going into the car with it and then that would go into the back of the gauge and then telling you your pressure from there. The only thing about those I don't really like them just because um, I don't want to take the chance of it leaking or the oil line breaking if it was inside the car and I don't know I just feel much better about having a digital gauge in my car other than a hard oil line gauge. Even though the mechanical oil pressure gauges are probably more accurate, um, this will work just fine for me. This is all I need and I'm sure these are pretty accurate as well but I mean we'll test it out once I get it in there. I've had some good luck with the glow shift gauges so not too worried about it. This one does read from 0 to 100 psi for those of you wondering and that should be plenty for what I need. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing installed. I'm gonna start by jacking up my car and crawling under there and then seeing where I'm going to be putting this sensor in. And then once I get this in, we'll go from there and then start wiring it in and all that good shit. So we are under the car right now. Not sure if you guys can tell, but there's freaking grease everywhere from when that axle exploded, at least over on this side over here. I kind of cleaned some off, so don't mind that, but there's a couple ways we could do this. So first of all, for those of you who don't know, my car does have a sandwich plate right here. So basically all this thing is, is just a plate in between the block and the factory oil filter. And what it allows me to do is tap off of it for high pressure oil. So for instance, right here you can see this is my feed line and that goes to my turbo. The turbo is currently not on the car, but when it is on the car, that feeds oil to the turbo and on the other side of that plate, you can't see it, there are also two other fittings with plugs in them. And I could also tap off of those, so I could just take one of those plugs out and put the sensor in there for the oil pressure gauge, and it would work just fine. So having the sandwich plate right there would make it really easy for installing something like this, just like I was saying, because you can just take, take out the plugs, put the sensor in, and wire it up, and you'd be good to go. So I wish I could show you the plugs that I was talking about, but they are on the other side so pretty much just imagine where this feed line's at it's threaded into the side of this plate right here there are two other fittings right there with holes and all I would have to do is just kinda screw it into there and it'd be ready to wire up but for those of you who do not want to get an oil sandwich plate for whatever reason there are other ways you can do this so this right here is my factory oil pressure sensor or oil pressure switch whatever you want to call it and it is currently not hooked up this wire is supposed to go to that but don't mind that for right now. What you could do is pull this guy completely out and get a three-way, I believe, yeah, three-way fitting. Screw a fitting into there, put the sensor on the end of that fitting, and then where it tees in the middle, you can put the sensor right off that, and that would work fine just like that. So what I'm actually going to be doing on this car right here, just because this is so easy to get to from under the car and I can film it and you guys can see it. It's not on top of that sandwich plate and hard to get to. What I'm going to be doing is actually just pulling out this factory oil pressure sensor and just getting rid of it completely and I'm going to put in my aftermarket one right where that one's at. So I'm not sure if that will work for different cars just because you might get a check engine light because the sensor's missing or the oil pressure light might come on. I am honestly not sure how that will work but if you do need to keep this sensor in place for those reasons, like I was saying, you can always do the sandwich plate or get a three-way fitting right here and then just keep that sensor on the end of it. But in my case, 
Um, all I have to do is just make sure that this wire right here isn't grounding on anything and the oil pressure light will not come on at all and I will not have any sort of check engine lights. So this is a Honda Civic and it does have a programmable ECU, it's a Honda Data, so I'm not sure if a factory ECU would throw a check engine light either, but as far as I know for my car, pulling this sensor out won't do me any harm. And also, the only reason you have that stock sensor in there is just to keep an eye on it. So when you see your check engine light or your oil pressure light come on, you know that something could be up. It could be low on oil, your oil pump's going out or something like that. And it just lets you know to check on the car. And in my case, since I will be having an oil pressure gauge telling me exactly how much pressure is in there at all times, I won't have any need for the sensor anyway. So I'm just going to completely get rid of it and then tap off that guy right there just because that is so easy to get to and I don't have any use for the factory oil sensor at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that guy out and get the new one threaded in there. So I just got the factory oil pressure switch off. It's nice and easy on the H-Swap Civic, not a big deal at all, but at least on Wagyo and a factory G-Series, these are kind of a bitch to get to, so you kinda have to be patient with it. This was a 15 16 socket and on the D-Series as well, the factory sensor actually has kind of a nipple on the end of it right here. And you have to use a 15 16 deep socket to get it all the way on there. But in my case, I got lucky and I could just use a regular one. And it was nice and easy to get off. So that wasn't too bad at all. And also for those of you guys who are wondering, most of these uh, oil fittings share the same thread. I don't know what this is exactly, but everything you order related to these oil fittings should be the same fitting, like on the sandwich plate. These are all the same thread, so this sensor will go right into the stock block, no problem, and shouldn't be a big deal at all. And what I'm going to be doing right now is just putting some Teflon tape on the end of these threads right here, just to make sure this guy doesn't leak, and then I will be getting it in the car, and then we will start wiring it in. Got the new sensor put in, and as you can see, I already ran these two wires. So this green wire right here goes through the firewall, and this will be the signal wire for the gauge. And then this other wire right here is just a ground, and I just tapped off the oil pan right there, and that should work just fine. So these are labeled, so it's pretty easy to know where these need to go. And other than taping off this guy right here for the stock, uh, oil pressure sensor I should be done under the car so I'm gonna go ahead and go back inside the car and get the gauge wired in alright guys so I'm in the car I think I got the gauge wired up I'm just gonna show you how I did that real quick so this red wire and this yellow wire are the constant and switch 12 volt ignition so all I did was just kinda of put them together I don't know why you need one to be constant and then one to be switched I always have just tied these two together and then went to a switched ignition source and all my gauges work just fine so that's what I did on these as well and I'm going off the cigarette lighter just because that's how I've always done it I didn't know about tapping off the fuse panel so if you really wanted to you could get a little fuse adapter they make them and then it plugs into the fuse panel you can choose from any one of your switched ignition fuses and then just kind of tap power off that and you can make it look a little nicer and that's what a lot of people do but I only knew about the cigarette lighter at the time and it seems to work just fine anyway, so I just continue to do it. So these wires are going off the switched ignition positive on the cigarette lighter. And then I got the black wire just to a ground right back over there. You can see I have some other grounds over there as well for my other gauges. And then this yellow wire is that same green wire that was under the car going to the sensor. I just had to add a couple wires together to make it long enough. So this is the signal wire from the sensor, and that is going to the green wire on the gauge and everything should be hooked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this guy right in there, turn this light off real quick, and see if it comes on, which it should. Everything should be ready to go. So both my gauges came on, and oh, there it goes. Ooh, this one's nice. Here, let me show you guys. This one isn't like my other glow shift gauge. This one, the needle actually kinda has like a little setup time and it moves. Oh yeah, I like that, that's sick. So that does come on, let's see. It's reading zero on the oil pressure. Gonna go give it a start real quick and see if that gauge moves. And there we go. It says we got 60 PSI of oil pressure. Oh yeah, that's working great. So yeah, gauge works good. And then yeah, this is what I was talking about on the glow shifts. This is why I really like them. You can 
click this button right here and switch through the colors. Make it anything you like. They even have an option on here like where it will fade through the colors. But yeah, I really like these gauges. Definitely good quality for the price. So I would recommend them. And I got this one right here as well, my boost gauge, so. The gauge appears to be working correctly. Everything seems all good, so hopefully the sensor's not leaking any oil, which it should not be, but I will go check that in a sec. And now all I gotta do is pretty much just find a place to mount this guy. I'm currently out of spots to mount any more gauges. I was thinking about getting like a typical side pillar like everyone else does, but I don't really like those that much just because everyone can see your gauges. And I may actually be getting, they make this piece that goes where your radio goes, and then you can actually put like three gauges right here but then you don't have the radio anymore, but I don't have speakers anyway, so I don't really care about that. So I might be ordering that soon just so I can get this guy mounted, and then I will also probably be getting a fuel pressure gauge and probably something else, I'm not sure yet, but I mainly wanna get this oil pressure gauge hooked up just because I don't even have the stock oil pressure sensor plugged in at all, so I had really no way of knowing if my oil pressure was good, and I didn't even know if I was getting oil pressure going into the motor, and on a build like this, that's pretty important so now I don't got to worry about it got my gauge working and I just got to find a place to mount it but at least for now I can just like leave it in the cup holder or something making sure I'm getting oil pressure so yeah at least it's installed though hopefully nothing's leaking but I have faith it should be ready to go and I will be taking the hatch to hopefully pass a mission soon but before I do that I am going to be putting a new radiator on it because this one right here is kind of clapped out Definitely needs an upgrade, so I got a new radiator coming for it. Got to get that kind of hung up and where it needs to be and not about to hit the floor. Got to redo that oil return, make sure that's plugged up nice and good, not with some ghetto bubble wrap. Honestly, there's a lot of things I need to fix on this. Like, my catch can is kind of messy and all this wiring's janky as shit. And I just want to go through this car, make it nice and solid, make it a nice, clean race car. But it takes time, but at least it goes fast, so I guess that's all that really matters. So hopefully that helped any of you guys out who may be wanting to install an oil pressure gauge or pretty much any gauge. It's all kind of the same process. So pretty much at least on the oil pressure gauge, the hardest part is finding out where that uh, oil pressure sensor needs to go just because it's kind of fat and it can be hard to find room for it. But once you can find out where that needs to go and you got that screwed into the block, it's pretty much all downhill from there. The wiring's super easy and all the glow shifts come with instructions and it's really not a big deal at all. But if any of you guys do have more questions about it, just let me know in the comments. And that's pretty much it for tonight. So we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.